And now David will give us our scripture. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 6 and 7. Be careful concerning your alms, not to do them in the presence of men, merely that they may see them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, just as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the marketplaces, so that they may be glorified by men. Truly I say to you that they have already received their reward. But when you give alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done secretly, and your Father, who sees in secret, shall himself reward you openly. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who like to pray, standing in the synagogues and at the street corners, so they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have already received their reward. But as for you, when you pray, enter into your inner chamber and lock your door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret shall himself reward you openly. And when you pray, do not repeat your words like the pagans, for they think that because of much talking they will be heard. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Judge not that you may not be judged, for with the judgment that you judge you will be judged, and with the same measure with which you measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the splinter which is in your brother's eye, and do not feel the beam which is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take out the splinter from your eye, and behold, there is a beam in your own eye? O oh, hypocrites, first take out the beam from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to get out the splinter from your brother's eye. Do not give holy things to the dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, for they may tread them with their feet and then turn and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For whomever, whoever asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door is open. Thank you, David. Today's sermon lesson is on learning to love silence. The subtitle is, May We Please Have a Moment of Silence. In today's scripture, we heard some familiar verses from Matthew about managing our personal relationship with God, doing service for others, and about not judging others unless you've walked in their shoes. I began writing today's sermon when I was on jury duty recently. On one of the walls of the jury room, this jurist's prayer was posted. God, make me an instrument of thy peace. One of the admonitions student writers receive in writing class is to write about what you know. So this morning, I've chosen to talk about the Religious Society of Friends, whose members are commonly known as Quakers and their form of worship, which they call meeting for worship or friends meeting. The Sidwell Friends School is a Quaker preparatory school in Washington, D.C., and it was there that I realized that I learned to love the silence. Here's some background from the Wikipedia. The Religious Society of Friends was founded in England in the 17th century. George Fox is generally credited with being the principal co-founder. The central concept to many friends is the inner light. Accordingly, individual Quakers may develop individual religious beliefs arising from their personal conscience, conscience and revelation coming from God within. Further, Quakers feel compelled to live by such individual religious beliefs and inner revelations. Many Quakers feel their faith does not fit within traditional Christian categories of Catholic, Protestant, or orthodox, but is an expression of another way of experiencing God. Does any of this sound familiar? George Fox, I'm, this is, continues from the Wikipedia, George Fox and other early Quakers preach, uh, early Quaker preachers 
believed the direct experience of God was available to all people without mediation. That is, they didn't need hired clergy or outward sacraments. Fox described this by writing that Christ has come to teach his people himself. Modern friends often express this belief in many ways, including the attitude of trying to see that of God in everyone, finding and relating to the inner light, the inward Christ, or the spirit of Christ within. Early friends more often use such terms as truth, or the seed, and the pure principle. And from the principle that each person would be transformed as Christ formed and grew in them. Since friends believe that everyone contains that of God within, much of the Quaker perspective is based on trying to hear God and allow God's spirit free action in the heart. Isaac Pennington wrote in 1670, it is not enough to hear of Christ or read of Christ, but this is the thing, to feel him, my root, my life, my foundation. Like so many other religious groups, and this is me, the end of the Wikipedia, like so many other religious groups, the Quakers came to America to seeking religious freedom. At the time they came over from England, the British government dictated how people were to worship God. The Quakers had different ideas about what was the appropriate, what was appropriate, and bore the hardship of traveling to America to seek that freedom. Quakers believed in resolving disputes peacefully without weapons. They refused to go to war to kill. The reason for not killing was to honor the commandment, thou shalt not kill. And they took that commandment literally. Rather than using weapons, the Quakers were known for practicing civil disobedience. There are many famous examples of the effectiveness of civil disobedience. Probably one of the most famous example, probably one of the most famous examples of Quakers practicing civil disobedience is their participation in the mid-1800s in the Underground Railroad, where Quakers helped black slaves escape to freedom. They contravened the laws of the state because they felt compelled to follow the higher law of God to treat all persons equally and fairly. 